Good afternoon, everyone. With the IPCC and NOAA coming out saying October is the warmest year on record ever, I want to show you where it's cooling across the planet, and we'll take a look at their data. Greenland Summit Station shows 40 and 50 below temperatures when NOAA saying ice was melting. Antarctica showing increased snowfall and ice building. World Glacier overall total increasing 25% since 2003. And as with all repeating patterns, here we go. This is our second warning that's Greenland is going to melt into oblivion. That happened in 1930 as well. And with the Paris climate talks just right around the corner, these are the exact outcomes for the mitigation plans by destroying our economy worldwide. 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. That is a hundredth of a degree is all we are going to stave off by doing this. First ever recorded October snow in Kashmir. Russia, blizzards are making the news. You know it's unusual when the snow makes the news in Russia. And as we hear repeatedly, continually through the news, Antarctica is melting. 20th century increase in snowfall across coastal West Antarctica. This is the area specifically that's being shown. This was an article actually from NASA. The secondary linked article to this, mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet greater than the losses. This is the total overall satellite data of gigatons per year of loss or gain. As you can clearly see, the continent is incredibly stable and growing in several areas where ice might be lost is where the volcanic activity is below the surface. Increased volcanic activity accompanies grand solar minimums. Cause and effect, I see it right here in this chart. We're going to jump back to 1927. Ice caps in the Arctic are retreating. Greenland glaciers are melting. Fast forward to today. This is the summit station temperature recording for the last month back to the middle of October. I was told in news releases in the middle of October that it was melting up there. But how does snow and ice melt at 40 below Celsius? The temperature anomalies at Outnook also show cooling trend the temperature anomalies, again in Greenland, that we're seeing these repeating patterns. 1930s, they talked of melting. The IPCC, NOAA come out talking about impending melting. And there's been rapid increases in snow and ice in the billions of tons. Also, you can see blowing through the mean average over the last 23 years. 2015, far above that. The Atlantic multidecadal oscillation also showing a cooling trend, yet somehow CO2 is blamed on a natural seesaw pattern that extends back into the 1840s. And when you go further back to the, the sailors in the 13, 14, and 1500s, they actually have temperature records showing the same seesaw extending back another couple hundred years. I love CO2. I believe it helps our plants increase yield, better fruits, better vegetables, better grain for us to consume. Let's take a look at atmospheric CO2 parts per million. 150 million years ago, 500 million years ago, that was at 5,000 parts per million. We are down so low at the levels, it's almost where there's no plant growth anymore. Plants shut down down growing at 200 parts per million. These guys are trying to say that we need to stop CO2 and bring the levels down. I'm actually frightened of that. That reduces our crop productivity. And just right around the corner, the IPCC in Paris, I've highlighted in yellow, after all the mitigation treaties that are going to go on and all the economy destroying laws that are supposed to be passed during this time, these are the actual temperatures that will be mitigated. And the U.S. Clean Power Plan, by closing all the coal power plants in the United States, is only going to reduce the temperature by, get this, 0 0.01 degree. 
That is a hundredth of a degree by 2100. And no better is the EU 2020 policy 0 0.02 degrees to one hundredths of a degree by 2100. I'll let you be the judge of putting people into horrendous economic conditions to stave off one one hundredth of a degree temperature rise if, in fact, it's related to CO2, which a lot of information shows otherwise. Now, I must suggest you check out this PDF, which I've linked below, the Summary for Policymakers. It shows the projections of global mean sea level rise. Now, the extreme case is up at one meter. The lower case is right around a foot over the 100 years. So we'll take a look at gray satellites here. Now, millimeters, 10 millimeters equals one centimeter, but you need 2.5 centimeters to equal one inch. So it takes 25 years to raise sea level an inch based on the grace data here. Where you see red, that's one millimeter. So wherever it's red, after 100 years, it'll raise four inches. That is so far below any of the projections that we're seeing from these IPCC models. How can the mathematics be this far off and we're still following and listening to them? And I'll point out another anomaly that I saw right away. If you go down to about page 12, you'll start to see the observed changes in surface temperature, the top B. Notice how there's no Arctic or Antarctic temperatures included and some of the ocean parts are missing in the Pacific. Now when you go a couple pages further down around page 18, 19, you'll find slide A. Notice how the scary forecast from 2081 to 2100 shows the entire globe red. Now wait, you don't have the temperatures to add into the top, yet the forecast shows everything's going to be heating. So I don't get that either. Maybe you could explain it to me. Let's dive right into Noah's claim. Warmest October, warmest year ever, 2015. Notice that big heat spike at 1998, right in the center of the chart there. Go over to the far right, that's 2015. That's below 0.4. And you'll notice other years, 2012 and 13, 2009 and 10, 2007, are above this year's temperatures. So how can this possibly be the warmest year ever when the lower troposphere satellite measurements show something entirely different. And this is a great graphic to point out how the manipulations occurring. And I encourage you to question data that comes out that's showing something entirely different than really what's happening on the planet. So the lower troposphere here, I'll give you the satellite data for this. As you can see, most of the globe's neutral are at no warming or cooling right at the zero point. North and south around Greenland, you can see is cooling. There's very few places that it's actually warming, yet we're told it's the warmest year ever. And my last video was about how NASA and NOAA had readjusted temperatures. So I went back to the 2006 temperature record before anything got fiddled with, and you can clearly see there's a cooling trend happening. The U.S. rural data set shows the exact same thing. Back in history, 1911, hot spell up in Alaska, glaciers are melting. December 1923, Montana, Glacier National Park, no glaciers will be left. You know, we hear the same thing again and again. So let's take a look at the World Glacier Monitoring Service and see what they have. These are the glaciers that they're currently measuring. There's actually a much, much longer list, which I didn't want to cut and paste every single one. I left the link. Just go to the site and see it. It's over 150 glaciers they're monitoring right now. So the annual mass balance of all these glaciers combined, as you can see, since 2003, has gained ice by 25%. Case in point, with Alaska warming and the news claiming Canada's hot as ever and the news just going crazy with the California drought and heat, there should be absolutely no possible way ice could be forming on glaciers. So this is the pinpoint exactly. It's right near the border with the United States. This is off the Glacier Monitoring Service. South Cascade, increasing. Helm Glacier, increasing. 
place glacier increasing. And when you go into this site, it's just increase after increase after increase in Europe, Canada, wherever you look, it's increasing. It's amazing when you actually look at their own data. Single weekly ice coverage for Hudson Bay, above average. First October snows ever in Kashmir, India. And it's not just a dusting, it's like a foot and a half thick. Closed all the roads, closed all the passes, villages are cut off, animals are dying, people are trapped. They weren't expecting snow this early. And to bring you to early snows too much too early, Siberia, we're used to snow in Siberia in the winter, commonplace even. Yet, this is the worst blizzard in 10 years and it made the Russian front page news. So think about that for a moment. Snowfall and blizzard in Siberia makes the Russian news because it's so unusual. And a little interesting tidbit from the past, the Dalton minimum measured at three European temperature stations. This is 1770 to 1840. Pretty interesting though, how we can still get temperatures that far back. That's how we know the AMO was cooling as well back then. Projected temperature profile. We keep seeing it again and again and again. Cooling trend forecast out to 2030. The signs are all around us. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030, and I'll keep more stories like these coming to you.